Gran Turismo Sport is now nearly four years old, and with its successor, GT7 still a long way off, many may be wondering if they should buy it. In this video, we'll take a look at all aspects of the game to see whether it's worth your money in 2021. So Gran Turismo Sport is of course the latest instalment from the legendary Gran Turismo franchise. However, unlike past games, this one is very multiplayer focused. Gone are the crazy car modifications and extensive campaigns that we've seen before, but instead we were given what I believe to be the best multiplayer racing game currently available, and here's why. For starters, rather than the server-based systems that many other racing games have adopted recently, GT Sport has scheduled races. There are three races that stay the same for a week and they run every 20 minutes or so. This is so great because with this system you're guaranteed to have a full or nearly full grid every single time and the fact that races are so often means there's little waiting around. GT Sport also has a very good player driver and player sportsmanship rating system and this also works really well as it makes the racing close while also providing an initiative for players to drive cleanly. What takes these races to the next level though is strategy. In one of the three races every week there will usually be tyre wear and fuel management to think about which paired with a choice of multiple tyre compounds can really spice these races up. The graphics are another area where this game really stands out. When it was first released I was in absolute awe at how good it looked and while other games have certainly caught up, the detailed lighting and textures are still absolutely above average even today nearly four years later. This makes it a very immersive game to play and also makes using the photo and replay modes a lot of fun. Now in terms of the gameplay realism itself, and by that I mean the simulation quality compared to real life, I think it's a near perfect balance. Gran Turismo Sport needs to be able to appeal to a very wide audience, and it does that incredibly well, as if you intend to play this on a controller then the experience is great, yet the same can somehow be said if you want to play this more seriously with a wheel. The handling is good on the whole as it's very accessible while also being pretty realistic. There are tyre wear and fuel models that I mentioned earlier for those who want to take things a little more seriously, however there are also ample assists for those who want them. Everything I've just said about handling applies to this game's well over 300 car roster, and while this can't even touch the numbers of something like Forza Horizon, it's definitely enough. All of the cars are crafted with amazing accuracy and detail, and the variety is also nice to see as everything from older classics to modern performance and even concept cars. Thanks to the Vision GT program, manufacturers were invited to create futuristic versions of their cars, exclusively for GT Sport, which means there are loads of cool cars to try that you won't get anywhere else. The track list is also pretty extensive as there are nearly a hundred layouts now. There are however a couple of major tracks missing, such as Silverstone and Monaco, which is a bit odd as we've seen them in older games. Something else missing, or at least to some extent, are weather options. While the option for rain was added as part of one of the many updates this game has seen, only some tracks at certain times of day support it, which I think is very odd and quite annoying, especially if you've played something with the variety of Project Cars 2, which lets you drive in the snow. Now while this game is multiplayer focused, the offline wasn't completely ditched. Well, I say offline, but you'll still need a damn internet connection. There is a bit of a campaign in the form of the GT League. Here there are four racing categories going from beginner to endurance. Each category has a dozen or so mini racing series which will be based around certain cars. Basically you'll start with the Sunday Cup in sports cars and move your way up the leagues into GT3 and F1 cars. Now while this mode is alright, it really lacks the depth that we've seen in many other racing games campaigns. Because it only has four main stages of progression, no backstory and little car upgrades or modification, it just feels like it's missing a lot. There is also a driving school mode, which is great for people who are new to the game as it introduces basic racing techniques. Alongside this is the mission challenge mode, where you can test yourself in many different race scenarios, such as having to overtake a certain number of cars or reaching a certain speed. There's also a circuit experience mode, which I really wish other games could start including. In this mode, each track is split up into small sections, usually about 20 to 30 seconds or so, and this can allow you to learn the ins and outs of every element of the track. This is a great way to improve and it's also a load of fun as there are target times for you to beat. Something I should mention though is that the AI in this game are not great. When racing against them I find that they can't defend or attack very convincingly and even on the maximum difficulty quite a lot of players will still be able to beat them easily which is a bit of a shame and it makes it less fun. 
Now the final campaign mode is the Lewis Hamilton Time Trial Challenge. If you don't know who Lewis Hamilton is, he's a Formula 1 driver, and it's fair to say he's pretty good. In this mode you'll get to try and beat his lap times, which he set on GT Sport over a handful of tracks. You'll get a ghost of his lap on track with you, and there's also a video of him explaining how to master each track. This is a DLC, although I believe it's the only one in the game. However, it's £6.50 in the UK and $8 in the US. Aside from the campaign, there is of course time trial and custom race options, as well as a pretty decent drift mode, two-player split screen and VR, which we'll talk about now. If you have PlayStation VR, then GT Sport offers a couple of modes for you. There's a time trial mode, a short race mode against another AI car, and a showroom mode. VR content certainly isn't as extensive as many of us wanted, however the experience is pretty good. You can drive any track in any car and it is a lot of fun. The showroom mode is also a lot more fun than it looks, as you really get to see the fine details of every single car, and considering the amount of time that's been put into these car models, it's really quite cool to look around them. Now I went over the main online modes earlier, however there are two more that I didn't mention. For very casual or very serious racing, there's a lobby mode where you can basically set up your own public or private server. These can be great for things like drifting, playing with friends, but also super competitive league racing, as well as just messing around. But that isn't all when it comes to multiplayer because there is one more category, the Nations Cup and Manufacturers Cup. These are championship races where you either represent your country or chosen car brand, and it's also where the racing gets properly serious. Anyone can enter these races, however, basically at the end of the two month championship, those who come out on the very, very top are invited to the finals in Monaco, where Lewis Hamilton usually shows up. Now, most people won't be buying this game with the intention of becoming a professional esports driver, however, it's pretty amazing how accessible this can be with GT Sport. One final thing which I thought was worth a mention is the livery editor, which is another thing GT Sport does incredibly well. It's surprisingly easy to use and there are loads of official brand logos and designs for you to play with, and through the Discover feature, which is basically GT Sport's own social media, you can share your liveries or download other people's, which is a really great feature. One other really great feature is the Scapes mode. Here you can place your cars amongst hundreds of backgrounds to get some amazing shots. This sounds like a very simple thing, however the lighting on the cars has been nailed so perfectly that some pictures you can get out of this are indistinguishable from a real life counterpart. Overall, I believe GT Sport is absolutely worth buying in 2021, for most people at least. Its multiplayer was best in class at launch, and because it still has a very strong player base, it's arguably still the best now. A similar thing can be said when it comes to graphics, as they were so amazing at launch that you can't tell that this game is nearly 4 years old. If you're looking for a mainly offline experience though, then I can't recommend this game nearly as strongly. While the offline is adequate, that's about as good as it gets, so while there is certainly fun to be had, the multiplayer is the main attraction. Anyway, that's all for this video, if you have enjoyed it or found it useful, then a like or even a sub would be absolutely amazing. But that's everything, so thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.